my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Messy Jessie and you're watching. Welcome to my Blackathon TBR. I am so excited to be making this video. I cannot wait to talk to y'all about my plans for Blackathon round three, what I'm going to be reading this year. And by this year, I mean for Blackathon this year, not like the whole year, because that would be a really long video. But before I jump into the Blackathon TBR, I have to give a big, big, big shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Inkyard Press. I am extremely excited to be collaborating with Inkyard Press on one of my most highly anticipated releases of 2021, which is one of the good ones by Maika Mulit and Maritza Mulit. You probably know this really powerful sister author duo as the amazing geniuses behind the book Dear Haiti Love Elaine, which so many of us fell in love with. Released on January 5th, 2021, One of the Good Ones is this sister duo's sophomore novel, one that all of you are going to want to put on your Blackathon, TBR's ASAP. We are following Happy, who is completely devastated after her powerful and formidable sister, Kezi Smith, is killed after attending a social justice rally. She dies under very mysterious circumstances. And almost immediately, the rhetoric surrounding Kezi's death was that she was one of the good ones. Happy is incredibly frustrated with the way that the media is using her sister's death to imply that certain Black lives matter more than others. She and her sister Jenny decide to embark on a journey to honor their lost sister using none other than the Negro Motorist Green Book as their guide. But there's a twist to Kezi's story, one that will change everything all over again. First of all, we have to talk about this cover. <laughs> Just look at it, it's perfect, it's perfect. It's absolutely beautiful. This book promises such important and critical commentary surrounding the taking of Black lives, but I also really love the centering of family politics and dynamics and also a really critical look into the way that Black lives are discussed and talked about after they are snuffed out. All of that commentary is so critical and so absolutely important. And if you are participating in Blackathon this year, this would be a fantastic book to read for it, especially because the theme of Blackathon is about journeys and travelers. I love that this book centers two sisters who are going on a journey to find their way back to their family. And especially that it features the Negro Motorist Green Book, which still has significance today as it still is not safe for black folks to travel to many places in America. I love that this book has been described as more than a spectacular thriller, but also that it is a compass seeing into your soul and helping you find your true north. It is on sale now, get yourself a copy and then read it. Now it is time to play Jesse's deck of TBR with my TBR cards. I am so freaking excited. I cannot wait to see what the dice have in store for me. I have no idea how many cards I'm gonna pull and I'm open like, I'm going to try and challenge myself. I don't want to shoot myself in the foot, but I'm going to try and challenge myself to read 28 books this month. It's something that I've always wanted to do, and this is the month I'm going to do it. So if I end up having to roll these dice and pulling 12 cards out, then so be it. Hopefully I won't roll a 12, but if I do, this is like the one month where I wouldn't be mad about that. So I have my dice tray and my, it's like Akasha's hair just got all, all, all over the place, and then my two die. So without further ado, let's see what the dice have in store oh thank god okay so i'm gonna tilt this so you can see okay so i don't want to tilt it too much so it messes up my filming setup so i have rolled a five i have rolled a nice one two one two three four five so that means i'm going to be full pulling, wow, pulling five cards out of my deck of TBR cards, my TBR cards. Since I'm only reading Afrocentric reads this month, books by Black authors, if the, if I pull a card where I'm unable to read a book by a Black author, then I will put it back in the deck and draw a different card. So what I'm doing now is shuffling poorly. I know that Starla is watching this making fun of me about how I shuffle like she always does <laughs> because she hates me. Okay, so... All right, that's as good as the shuffling's gonna get here. This is how I shuffle, y'all. This is my life. Okay, so let's, I'm gonna fan it. I'm gonna face it towards you, and then I'm just gonna pick five cards at random. So let's go with this one. Let's go with this one. 
three. Let's go with you, four and five. Okay. How cool would it be if I pulled like the Black Girl Magic card this month? That would be super wild. Okay, so these are the five cards. So the first one is the page two screen card, a book adapted to screen. Okay, so Afrocentric read that has been adapted. None of those would work. What about, oh my God, why have none of you had adaptations? I hate racism. Oh, this is so hard. That's what she said. Okay. Oh, adaptation. Adaptation station. This is some bullshit. Okay. One hour later. Oh, none of these have been adapted. I hate it here. Oh, perfect. Wait, mm, I don't know if this counts. This might be a little bit of a stretch. Please don't cancel me for how I twisted this prompt. <laughs> I really want to read this anyway, so it would be perfect. So I have decided to select Get Out by Jordan Peele, the screenplay. And so technically this isn't a book that's been adapted. It's an, a movie that was adapted into a book. Just hear me out, hear me out. This indispensable guide to the film presents Peel's screenplay illustrated with over 150 stills from the motion picture, 20 pages of alternate endings, deleted scenes, and annotations by the filmmaker, along with an insightful essay by Tanana Reeve Du on the origins and history of Black horror. I am reading this. I think it's perfect. Just let me live. Let me have this. These are the remaining four cards. Let's start with this one. This is the polar opposite card. A book people either love or hate. Afrocentric book that people either love or hate. Okay. So, ooh, that could be a good one. For this prompt, I am selecting The Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. This is a deeply polarizing, paranormal, witchy, Afrocentric story. I have heard mostly bad things about this book, but I've also heard some really good things. I am very excited to see where I fall um, on the spectrum of people who are either enjoying or hating this book. It is described as gothic, dark, and utterly enthralling. I'm gonna try really hard not to make a sex joke about that because I'm a mature adult. Our protagonist, Emmanuel, was born hated because of her mother's decision to have a union with someone outside of the race. Because she is vilified simply by nature of being who she is, she resolves to be very pious and to follow the holy doctrine whenever possible. She lives in a puritanical society, but when her mother dies under mysterious circumstances and she learns about Okay, so my camera died because it's anti-black. Anyway, don't remember what I was saying, but essentially a mishap lures her into the dark wood forest where she finds that the spirits of four witches still reside and these spirits give her her mother's journal and she finds out that her mother herself consorted with witches. And this leads Emmanuel down this journey of darkness and magic. And for the first time, she's beginning to question the teachings of the church, etc. I am pretty excited about this, especially because I can count this for a prompt for Blackathon team thriller slash horror, which I am hosting. Okay, three more cards to go. Let's go with this one. This is the Tochi on Yabuchi card, a work of Afrofuturism. The black gods are smiling upon the on me on me and the i'm not even surprised because this is my this is my month this is black history month it's it's our time it's our time so of course i would pull this like okay i see you a work of afrofuturism that i can do for this card i am going to be reading the rebel sisters by tochi Anyabuchi, who this card is of course named after i've been looking for an excuse to read the sequel to War Girls. I am very, very excited. In this book, we are following Ify. It has been five years since the Biafran War ended. She is now a high-ranking, well-respected medical officer who has dedicated her life to helping refugees rebuild their lives in the new colonies. I think Ify's work is really interesting because what she does is she works with refugees to help preserve the memories of the loved ones that they have lost so that those memories stay safe and those people 
people are not forgotten. But when a mysterious space virus breaks out among the children of the colony, all of that gets compromised. And there's more to the plot than that. But I don't want to give too in depth of a synopsis since this is a sequel. I cannot wait for this. Okay, two more books, two more cards so far. I cannot talk. Oh my goodness. Two more cards so far. Let's go with this one. This is the what if card, a strange, odd or innovative premise. Okay, I can do that. I've got some strange books. For this prompt, I am happily selecting The Prophets, which is by Robert Jones Jr. This debut novel is about the forbidden love that springs between two enslaved black men on a plantation in the deep south. And while there's nothing odd or strange about that, I would say that it is innovative to have an author focus on queer slaves, specifically two queer black men, and what that meant for the plantation, what that meant for their selves and for their families. I am really, really excited about this book. And I also feel that it is innovative because it is supposed to be very intertwined with gospel and a lot of religious references. It is supposed to be lyrical and tense and has been described as crescendoing in climactic reckoning. It sounds amazing amazing and a little erotic. <gasps> I know it seems like I planned this, like I planned these cards. I promise I didn't. It is a complete accident that I pulled this card. <sighs> but the Blackathon gods are smiling upon me. I'm telling you they are smiling upon me. This is the Never Forget card, a book centering Black Lives Matter. And I love this card because Olivia put the names of some of the many Black folks whose lives were lost to police violence and anti-Blackness and racism. And I just, I love this card. It's so moving. It's especially pulling it during Blackathon 2021, when we still have so much work to do, where the world is still not a safe place for black people, for black children, um, for black elders, for black disabled folks, for black people, for black queer folks, for black trans folks. And it's just, um, it reminds me of why we do this, why I do this readathon every year. And I do it for other reasons. I do it for black joy. I do it to celebrate black authors. I, yes, but, but all of it connects to these lives, these people, who should still be breathing. Okay, so I'm gonna pick a book centering Black Lives Matter. All right, let me, let me not cry today. <sighs> uh, okay. All right, a book centering Black Lives Matter. Boy, do I got some of those. So that would not count. Ooh, what about this? What about this? So probably not the book that you would have thought me to select for this prompt. But hear me out. I am going to select How Beautiful We Were by Imbolo Mbwe. I am incredibly excited about this book. Set in the fictional African village of Kosawa, it tells of a people living in fear amid environmental degradation wrought by an American oil company. Pipeline spills have rendered farmlands infertile. Children are dying from toxic water. Promises of cleanup and financial reparations to the villagers are made and ignored. Told from the perspective of a generation of children and the family of a girl named Thula, oh my God, what a beautiful name, who grows up to become a revolutionary. How Beautiful We Were is a masterful exploration of what happens when the reckless drive for profit coupled with the ghost of colonialism comes up against one community's determination to hold on to its ancestral land and a young woman's willingness to sacrifice everything for the sake of her people's freedom. The reason that I picked this instead of a narrative like Light It Up, which is a YA novel about a young black girl who is shot by a police officer when she's walking with her um, hoodie on or headphones in. Um, the reason why I picked this instead of this is because issues of environmentalism, issues of American companies and corporations, of white owned companies and corporations having devastating effects on the lives of black peoples is a part of Black Lives Matter. Company, American companies making life unlivable and unwell for black people in other countries outside of America 
worldwide as well as black lives in this country matters that is a part of black lives matter if you look at the rates of which black children get asthma which is a thousand percent tied to the fact that black children can live in areas that have been deeply and disproportionately affected by the waste of american companies leading to an increased rate of asthma in black children and premature deaths um, of black children and that's just like one of the many ways in which american companies destroy the lives of black people both in the united states and without so this is a part of black lives matter it is a part of that conversation and not only kills black lives but impacts the health the wellness the the psychology all of that and all of that goes into black livelihood and all of that matters so how beautiful we were is the book that i'm going to be reading for this now to talk about what i'm going to be reading for blackathon and i'm going to leave the recommendations videos that starla and ashley have made for their teams in case you want recs for the science fiction fantasy team and the literature nonfiction contemporary team. For the Megan Giddings prompt, a book where a black character moves to a new town with an old secret, I am going to be reading none other than The Changeling by Victor Laval. It is on its way to me. It's not here yet, okay, but I'ma read it, I promise. Described as a modern day urban fairy tale, The Changeling is about one man's thrilling journey to travel through an enchanted world in order to find his wife. I think the implication with the wife's disappearance and with the theme of The Changeling is that the wife began to believe that her child was a malevolent spirit and then either killed or disappeared the child. And essentially this, this story is about a father trying to find his way back to his wife and child. Now the reason I'm selecting this book for this prompt is because on Goodreads it says, Apollo begins a journey that takes him to a forgotten island in the East River of New York City, a graveyard full of secrets, a forest in Queens where immigrant legends still live, and finally back to a place he thought he had lost forever. So he's definitely going to new places, places that are new to him that have secrets of their own. So I think the changeling is perfect for this prompt. The next prompt is Victor Laval, Supernatural or Paranormal Horror. Now I can read Year of the Witching by Alexis Henderson. That will satisfy this prompt. But officially, I am going to be selecting Slay Stories of the Vampire Noir, edited by Nicole Givens Kurtz. This is an anthology about black vampires. So yeah. The next prompt is called Rachel Housel, a book that takes place on vacation, sabbatical, or a decadent setting. For this, I have happily selected The Strivers' Row Spy by Jason Overstreet. This is a debut novel set in the 1920s during the Harlem Renaissance. It is about a black student who has recently graduated and the Roaring Twenties have brought him opportunities that his bougie and snobby family couldn't have even dreamed of. But rather quickly, he finds himself ensnared in the trap of the FBI and working as a spy who is supposed to be collecting evidence on Marcus Garvey and his movement for black folks to give up on America and and move to Africa. But instead, our protagonist Sydney decides to start collecting information on the FBI and spying on them. So he's essentially double crossing the FBI, which probably is gonna lead to a lot of problems. Now, the reason I'm excited about this book, why I chose it is not only because the 1920s themselves, 1920s New York is such a decadent and amazing setting, but also because this is a character who knows privilege, was born and raised in privilege. And then also he has to inhabit a lot of very glamorous, glittering social circles throughout his time as a spy. So definitely decadent setting. And I am super freaking excited about the group book, which is none other than The Wife of the Gods. This is a book that is set in Ghana and we are following a dedicated detective who has been assigned to look into the mysterious death of a promising young female medical student. With thrillers, especially with mysteries, I like to go in pretty vague. So that's as much of the synopsis as I'm going to give. But if you want more details, you could totally check that check that book out. I'm so excited about this group book. I love that it is not set in the United States. I'm honestly just so excited about my reads for this month. And I'm going to be doing tons of vlogs for this month. So these are definitely not all the books that I'm going to read. These are the ones that you can absolutely expect reviews on. I am so freaking excited about this month and all of the reads that I have planned. I cannot wait. I'm definitely going to be trying to watch as many of your TBRs as possible. I am going to have a black thriller recommendations and discussion video coming out very soon. My Etsy shop is back open. So for any of you who are interested in my TBR cards, I will leave that shop link down below. And of course, absolutely no pressure. That's just for those of you who want to get decks of your own. Thank you so much for watching this video. Let me know in the comment section below which of these books looks interesting what you are reading for Blackathon and what team you're on. Tell me that it is team thriller slash 
horror because it is obviously going to be the best freaking team. I am so freaking excited that Blackathon is finally here, y'all. If you would like to see more content from me, follow me on my Instagram, but all of my social media links are gonna be in the description box below. Stay safe, wear your mask, and I'll see you in my next video. Thank you.